Hello, welcome to my studio. I'm Diana Gra, and today I thought to share with you how I create a painting. And I'm not focusing on how to execute this painting in watercolor, so I'm not showing you a painting demonstration. I rather like to share with you how I get from A to B, meaning how I create my own heartfelt painting uh, without copying what I'm just seeing. And that is uh, tricky and it takes quite a bit of practice um, to let loose and to move away from uh, the confinements that a photo a reference gives you. So be brave and have fun and make any subject your own. So I have printed out a couple photos uh, from some sunflowers from my garden and I just use them as an inspiration. And uh, I show you, um, usually when we have photos, they are compositional wise not ideal. And that is another big reason why we as artists uh, are, should use our creativity to compose our own photo, our own reference, our own composition, our own painting, um, and uh, make it the way we like it, make it perfect for us, okay? So this is not perfect, this photo is not perfect, so I'm not just copying it, I rather learn about it and make it my own. Um, how I start usually to warm up is uh, I learn about the shapes, the shapes of my subject. So I'm taking a pencil quite often and I'm just outlining the, the petals of my flowers or I'm outlining um, my landscape or whatever subject I have or building or animal or whatever. I'm outlining it and I'm just thinking about the shapes and the movement and, and the overall information I'm getting here. See how the leaves are attached. I Even though I wanna paint in a loose style, very loose and suggestive style, I have to give my spectator some information about uh, the subject that my spectators will recognize this flower as a sunflower, right? So it can, the background can be very loose and watery and fluent, um, but uh, how the leaves are attached to the stem or how um, the petals are um, shaped here uh, is quite of uh, interesting um, or necessary information for the spectators to recognize this flower as a sunflower, okay? Unless we wanna go in a totally abstract way and then we're simplifying our subject down to the absolute essentials. So, and make it very suggestive then. Um, this painting here with my sunflowers, I like to give my spectator a few more informations. So I'm learning about my shapes by outlining it and, and just um, observe, observe the, the borders and observe how these leaves are shaped and getting some ideas of um, heat, light and shade here too and go from there. So uh, then I take the two photos and I start to think about my composition. Usually a reference photo is not ideal to translate it or copy it step by step onto a piece of paper. I find this very boring and uh, yeah, it is copying, everybody can copy it. It is the making it your own expressing what feeling you had when you when you saw these these flowers or when I saw these flowers in my garden and I want to bring that forward and I want to tell a story um, and then I use a few photos and I pick this from maybe just this little flower from here and and this flower from here and then I compose my story and I do this uh, in little thumbnail drawings. And my spectator is guided through 
uh, the painting. So uh, ideally, I wanted I want my spectator to enter on on one corner um, when looking at the painting, and enter in one corner. So I would place a big leaf or something eye catching there that points to my second uh, point of interest. That's a flower here. And there is then my main actor, the flower then here. And it's hard to see right now, uh, but I'm uh, just getting the rough storyline um, developed. And when I have one storyline um, drawn, then I'm doing a next one. So I'm thinking, I'm asking myself, how would it look if I take a big flower just uh, face on and place it here? and then have a, another flower here. And I know I, my composition of rooms uh, is three and I try to do different shapes and different sizes. So I would place another yellow flower here maybe, right? And then having my stems and then another leaf, maybe here, another leaf here. So, and then I'm looking at it and say, is this storyline what I really want? Is um, is this interesting? Do I have a background, a middle ground, a uh, um, foreground? Uh, how is my values? Do I have three to five values in there? And then if I, I say yes, okay, that is what I want. Then I move on and think about um, the colors what I use and um, the techniques that I want to use, okay? All this thinking process from composing the story over placing the value and and uh, creating my major focal point and and all this um, up to the my third uh, decision making process is so what technique what watercolor technique do I want to use and uh, what colors uh, what color theme do I want to use um, monochromatic um, triads double harmonies there are there are a few color harmony themes that I can use and that are eye-pleasing and convey special feelings. I need to think about warm yellows, cool yellows, oranges, and and going together, complementing with my blues, what kind of blues I want to use. And all this thinking process uh, I'm going to do in my third um, sketch uh, towards um, my painting. So the first uh, the first sketch, uh, first time is, first thing is, sorry, first thing is observation. I learn about my subject and I simplify. My second step is creating the storyline and I create different storylines um, that is called composing my painting. And it can have uh, subjects from different photos in it, right? So I can combine what I want in that. And my third, third um, sketch is the plan of execution where I uh, test what color theme I want to use and where I get uh, clear about the techniques that I want to use. And uh, when I worked through this preliminary process, I'm starting my first version of painting. And these are photos from some some flower paintings I drawn uh, or I painted over the years. And um, as you know me, I like techniques best. So for me, it's more important to showcase the um, beauty of watercolors and the vibrancy of watercolors before um, being technically correct with my drawings. And have too much detail. So here I use different papers and different um, formats. There was a composition. The lady bought this painting here, but she had a big wall, so she wanted some other um, sunflower paintings that complement uh, that one painting. So I came up, I painted probably eight or nine different versions, and the lady decided to have these two paintings um, then with this. So, and here is another version of my sunflower paintings, what I did over the years. Um, getting more and more stylish, getting just uh, less and less detail and just featuring um, a lot of technique and the beauty of the colors. And here too, 
very uh, watery, very um, loose and fluent um, painting approach. Um, this one is sold, this one is sold too. And here um, is a different color theme again, a, a little bit of different um, composition again. Just showing you uh, what you can do when you just let go of that copying urge and uh, interpret a reference photo the way you um, feel best, the way it works for you. In my online classes or courses, I'm going through a lot of different techniques that gives you some tools um, so that you can express yourself better and you have a better toolbox so you can decide, okay, I want to um, do this background dry and dry or I want a really watery background and then I'm gonna maybe I'm using some stems maybe I'm using some um, other tools feathers to paint or scratch my um, paint onto uh, the paper there are there are tons of wonderful ways of um, painting and creating textures with watercolors and that is all in my first three courses in my online network. We're starting from scratch, uh, learning the basics about watercolors and then evolving into how to compose and how to execute um, your own painting. So you're not just following a video tutorial, so you are encouraged um, to be your own artist, to become your, to develop your own style and express yourself in the way you like best. That is my goal for you. And it's because that is the ultimate fun when you paint. Uh, you're an original, you're authentic. Uh, it takes a little while to get used to this approach. It's way easier to copy things, especially when you copy other artists' paintings because the artists have um, taken many decisions already for you. But when you do your painting process from scratch with your own reference photos and then make it your own, I promise you, your art will resonate way more with uh, your audience audience simply because it's you it's true it's you you had the fun it comes from your heart and that is my goal with all my workshops to encourage everybody to develop their own style and their own artwork I hope this uh, was interesting for you and uh, gave you a little glimpse into my world how I work if you have any questions just uh, message me in the comments uh, you can leave some comments too if you like that and if you like to learn more and uh, yeah i would love to paint with you see you later bye bye